Alright, so we are almost done with the filters. The only one that is left is filtering by tag. So we are already able to filter the result by the user and also with a search term. So we have multiple filters and now we want to add a third one that would be by tag. Much like what we did with the user, we want to click on these tags and then have this filter in our URL parameter. We know our tags are sitting inside the cart component. So right here, and it is already a button. We just have to create a function. So when we click on it, we will add that parameter to the URL. So inside our script tag, similar to this select user, we can have another function. Let's just copy this and paste it underneath. I will call this select tag. And as a parameter, we will accept a tag. So this would be just one parameter. Now we want to make again the same request to the same page, which would be a get request and include the previous parameters. So remember we did this in the previous video, we grabbed the parameters of the route function and we included them in the payload of the new request. So this time we are creating a new tag, right? We want to include the user ID if there is any and the search, so it's already there and then add a new tag. So we will just say tag is going to be this tag parameter up here. Now, of course, we are adding a new parameter. So we want to include that in the previous functions. So we had user ID search in the select user function. We can also say if there is a tag in the parameters, so params.tag, then include it. And you might be wondering why don't we destructure the params object by using the spread operators like this. So this will of course give me the key value pairs, but I'm doing it this way because these are the only parameters I want it to be included in this particular request. For example, if we have a page that is set to three and then we include another filter that would reduce the results, then there will be no page three. So then we will have an error. That's why I don't include that one. And through this request, we will be jump back to page one with whatever results we have. Anyway, let's just include this inside our search function before I forget. So we just want to copy this line and go to our home component and paste that after the user ID as the third element in this payload. All right, so now let's go back to the card component and attach this select tag to the tag button. So we can scroll down and right here we have a button. We can just use the click event listener again and say select tag, which is looking for a tag. So we can just say this tag right here. So we just pass it down here. So now if we click on any of these tags, we are seeing it in the URL. Let me clean this up so it's easier to see. So tag is tech, for example, tag is biz or whatever. Now we need to handle that in our request, of course. So first let's use it in our filter function. So inside a listing controller, we already have two filters. We can add another one. So let's say tag and then go to our listing model. We have the search, we have the user, and now we want to do the same thing for the tag. So again, let's say filters and look for the tag element. If that doesn't exist, then we will return false. And then we just want to query our tags column. So I'm going to copy this where statement that has the percentage sign and then say query and then paste that where statement. So let me end this statement and explain why I'm doing this. So of course we want to look into the tags column, right? So we say where tags is like the request tag. Now the reason I'm doing this because our tags column is a string that is comma separated. If we want to be a specific, we need to grab that column and break it into elements and then check if it matches our request tag. But this way we are just saying, look inside that whole string. And if you find that tag, even if there is a comma before it or after it, then it's fine. So include that into the result. So that's all. Let's see if this works. So again, I'm going to clear everything and press on game. For example, you notice we have only 16 results. If we choose dev, we have only four results and we know it's working because it's returning different results. Now, again, because we included the previous parameters, we can apply multiple results. So if I go to page two, we are returning all the listings that has the tag tech but I want to add another filter and say only listings that belong to this user. So click on this name. We go back to page one 
and we have only the listings that belong to this user and have the tag tech. And that's why I didn't include all the parameters of the URL, because if we had done that and we were on page two, then this would throw an error because we have only four results and there is no page two. And of course we can add even the search filter. So let's say search for this particular phrase and we have two results. So all the filters are working correctly. And I just want to make one of these very unique. So let's open our database and manually change one of these. So one of these that has game only, I will change it to something else. For example, movie. So we have only one listing that has the tag with movie. So let's clear everything. And if I can find that one, there it is. So it's on the second page. If I select it, there is only one. So all our filters are working properly. And you can see now why we use this scope filter instead of including all of this in our controller, because our controller can get quite messy. And imagine you had 10 more filters. So you don't want to include them all on the same controller. And in fact, we are not done with this query. We still have to include two more things or two more criteria. So let me add the easier one, which is about the listing. So remember, we said all our listings would be disapproved at first. So let's disapprove this listing that has the movie tag. So I will just manually set this to zero and commit to the changes. And if we go back to our website, we still have 20 results. So we don't want to show this because this is not approved. Let's go to listing controller. And before the filter, we can add another verse statement and simply look into the approved column and say, return the ones that are true. And we will exclude the listings that are not approved. So going back to our website, if we reload, you notice now we have 19 results because that listing is not approved. So we are not showing it. So the other criteria that I want to apply before doing any of this is to check if the user has the general role or in other words, is not suspended. So essentially an admin would be able to suspend a user, for example, for violating the terms and conditions. And if that user is suspended, then none of their listings would show on the website. So let's do this. I'm going to put this on a new line and under listing model, I can use a where has function. This is similar to the where function down here, but it allows me to look inside another model's properties. So with the where function, we look in that particular model's properties. So in this case, listing properties, but with where has, I can look into another model, in this case, user. So that is the first argument. And then I can pass a closure here or a callback function, which would take a query builder. So we want to import this builder class from Eloquent. So make sure it is imported from database eloquent builder. And we want to accept the query. And in the body of this builder, now we have access to the user's property. So we can say query and then use the regular where function, but look into the user's table or user model. So we want to say, look into the user role column. And if it is not, so that is our operator and say not suspended. And we just have to add an arrow here because we are chaining this width. And if I just put this on different lines and end this statement, so everything is correct now. So again, let's recap. We want to return all the listings where the user's role is not suspended. And then we would include the user who created that listing and the listing is approved and check if there is any filters in our request and then return the latest ones and paginate them and put six items on each page, but also include the query string. So I understand if this is a bit confusing at first, but after some time and reading about these functions in Laravel documentation, it becomes easier. But essentially what we are doing, we are just adding a bunch of if statements and queries to grab the proper result. So let's see how this affects our results now. So we shouldn't see any difference. So we still see 19 results because none of the users are suspended, but let's go to our database and to the users table. And we have two users. I'm going to change the name of this one to John, which is just easier. And this one to Mike, I just changed their names. So we have John and Mike. So now I'm going to make this user. So Mike user suspended. I will change the role to suspended like so. And now if we go back to our website, and reload, 
we have only 11 results and all the listings belong to John. Because of course, this user is suspended, that means we are not including their listings. So we just covered a relatively advanced query builder using Laravel, Inertia, and Vue.js. And we are almost done with it. We just want to add some buttons up here to remove the filters if the user want to undo it. So let's do that in the next video.